today we're going to look at fixing color balance or color casts using a variety of filters in Luminar 2018. We'll be moving back and forth between these three images. A photo of Niagara Falls taken through a green tinted window. Here's the before and here's the after. We're going to look at a boudoir shot where we'll turn night into day. And finally, a portrait shot where we had a lot of yellow surfaces reflecting onto our subject that we need to neutralize. An image that is not color balanced is said to have a color cast, as everything in the image appears to have been shifted towards one color. Color balancing may be thought in terms of removing this color cast. Now, before we get into fixing images, let's talk about light and color temperature. Different light sources have different color temperatures. For instance, the lights in our houses are probably more golden or warmer, and the light outside on a sunny day is more blue or cooler. Now our brain automatically adjusts to these different color temperatures, automatically neutralizing the color cast so white always looks white to our eyes. Now you might be thinking, can't I just auto white balance in my camera? Well, auto white balance can do a pretty good job, but it isn't 100% accurate. So sometimes we need to be able to do a few corrections ourselves. Now let's get started. In this image, there was a lot of yellow light reflecting off the walls onto our subject, giving the whole scene a yellow color cast. So the first thing I usually do when I'm trying to fix any color cast is I go and I select the develop filter, or in the case of a raw file, the raw develop filter. Now in the adjust tab, there's a little eyedropper and you can use that eyedropper to tell Luminar what should be white in the image. And before I start clicking, I want to point out some things. When you click on what should be white, you don't want to pick something really blown out like the sky or a specular highlight. And in this case, because most of that gold color is coming from the paint on the walls around her, I don't want to choose anything that should be white in the background. That's not going to give me an accurate assessment of what needs to be changed. I could use this window right here. And again, it's pretty close to being yellow, but I really want to pick something white within the frame that I want to change. So I'm going to look for a white spot right here on this dress. And to do that, I'm going to zoom in to 100%. That's Command-1 on a Mac or Control-1 on Windows. Now I have to be careful here because there's a lot of pastels, but I think it's white right about here. So I'm going to go ahead, grab the eyedropper, and hover over that one area. And all I need to do is click on that area, and it's going to automatically adjust my white balance. Let's zoom out. I'm going to use Command-0 on a Mac and Control-0 on Windows. And as you can see, it really has changed this image. Now let's go to a split screen. And it's really important to see where you've come from whenever you're doing any kind of color correction. So as you can see, it was pretty yellow, and it's done a nice job fixing this. But I want to tweak it a little bit more. If you look directly under where we got the little eyedropper, you'll see two sliders. One is labeled temperature and the other is labeled tint. Now temperature uses the slider to warm or cool a shot. This adjustment essentially adds cyan or yellow to an image to change its color temperature. And as you can see, it's already moved towards the cyan, but I want to push it a little bit further just to really get to the point where my whites really look right. If I, if I overshoot, you can see I ruin the image, it gets blue. So I'm just going to really do a little bit of fine tuning. I feel like I'm pretty close on my white balance, but it seems that there's a little bit of green in here. So I'm going to go ahead and use the tint slider, which is between green and magenta, and add a little more magenta to the image, and that's going to neutralize that green. Let's take a look at the before and the after of this image. This is where we were, and this is where we are. So the eyedropper is one of your most useful tools when color correcting an image. Now let's jump over to the boudoir shot. And as you can see, it's very blue. And this was intentional. I actually set the white balance on the camera to tungsten. And I used a strobe, and strobes are daylight balanced. So everything became very blue, and it gave me this moonlight feel. But if I wanted to change it back to the way the light originally looked, I could actually go in the raw develop filter to this drop down here. And that's just right next to that eyedrop we saw before. And when I click on it, I can see all the different presets for many of the lighting situations that you might be shooting under. So if the settings on your camera are wrong, 
you can very quickly correct that by going to the white balance dropdown and switch from as shot to daylight, which tells Luminar that it really should be a daylight balance. And when I click on that, it automatically fixes the image. So in this case, if you have your camera settings wrong, a lot of times you can go to that drop down menu and you'll discover you can very quickly balance it by selecting the right type of light that you shot under. I want to jump back for just a second to that previous shot because we also used the develop filter there. Now, as you see, we did do a custom correction, but if I click on this drop down, the only choice I have is as shot. And the reason is, is that this is not a raw file. This is a TIFF file. So whenever you bring in a TIFF or a JPEG or a PNG or even a, a Photoshop document, you will only have that one choice as shot. Now here's a great little trick. If we scroll down the very bottom of the list, you'll see there's a filter called color temperature. And if I click on that, you'll notice the color temperature filter focuses on three things. The temperature slider, the tint slider, and your eyedropper, which is what we used in the develop filter. But even though this is a TIFF, if I click on the drop down, I actually get all of those options that I had in the raw develop filter. So if you accidentally had the wrong setting on your camera and you want to be able to fix it and it's not a raw file, add the color temperature filter and you'll be able to very quickly choose the correct lighting situation for when you shot the image. Let's jump back to the boudoir shot and I'm going to go ahead and delete my raw develop filter because I want to show you another great way that you can correct a color cast. I'm going to add a filter called curves and the curves filter is incredibly powerful. When you first launch the curves filter you see a diagonal white line and a lot of times I use this just to enhance the contrast of an image and by default it always starts with just the white but I can actually work with my curves in the red, green, and blue color spaces. So I'm going to actually go over to the blue color space and remove some of the blue saturation here. And I can do that just by clicking right here in the middle and just pulling down the blue in the midtones. And you'll notice not only do the blues disappear, but her skin starts to warm up. Now I can also go over here to the reds and add a little bit of red just to bring a little more red into the skin tone. And I want to show you the before and after. This is where we are and this is where we were. So using the curve filter is very, very powerful. If I wanted to, I can even go back over here to the white and I can brighten up the midpoint of my image just by sliding that up to the left. The curve filter is an incredibly powerful adjustment tool. It takes a little bit to get used to, and I recommend just trying to use it and play with it and seeing how you can adjust the colors in an image. Now let's look at the image from Niagara Falls that I took through that green tinted window. And as you can see, this image is not what it should be. So again, the first thing I might do is I might put on that develop filter and try to find something that's white. So I'm going to click on the eyedropper, and this is a little tricky because, you know, the water really was green. The clouds sometimes are tinted too blue. If I tried to click on the clouds, it doesn't really give me an accurate fix. So I need to really find something that should be white. And I could try the water, and we'll give that a click. And as you can see, it really doesn't help. It's a lot of guessing because I can't figure out exactly what truly is white in this image. So let's go ahead and reset that filter and we're going to use a couple of filters to tweak it. Now we learned earlier that temperature and tint are great to work with. So what I want to do is I want to add some yellow and it will lose some of that blue and I want to lose some of that green. I'm going to add a little bit of magenta and you can see right now that the clouds are starting to look white and the water is starting to look just appropriate. I think I added a little bit too much magenta. But the key thing here is to always go back and look at the image before and look at the image after. So this is a start, but I really want to fine tune this image. I think I have a little bit too much magenta in the mist in the water, and I think I need the sky to be a little bit richer. So the first thing I want to do before I add any more filters, I do want to open this up a little bit. I want to just bring up the shadows. 
And that's not going to affect the color at all, but it really is going to enhance the image. And maybe drop the highlights a little bit, just so we have a little more detail in the water. Now the next filter I'm going to add is the color balance filter. And this allows me to control an image in specific areas. For instance, I can say, you know what, my highlights, that area right over here of the mist, has a little bit too much red in it. I just want to get out a little bit of the red. I'm going to just move this over to the cyan a little bit. And you'll notice that my colors are becoming a little more natural. And I also want to get rid of a little bit of the blue and bring in a little more of the yellow tone so I can really see the earth. So this is starting to fix my image, and I'm just doing this in the highlights. I can go over and do the same thing in the midtones. So if my midtones, for instance, I wanted to change the colors if I could, and if the shadows have a color cast, so maybe I want to get rid of some of the color cast down here, I could go ahead and add a little magenta to the shadows, and we can see this image is starting to really balance. Again, always compare where you came from to where you are. I'm going to add one last filter to tweak this, and this is an incredibly powerful filter. It says HSL. It stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. And what I can do with the Hue, Saturation, and Luminance filter is literally control all the different bands of color, increasing or decreasing their saturation, making them brighter or darker, or even tweaking their hue. So if I wanted to get rid of a little bit of the red, if I haven't got it all with my color balance, I can actually go over here and just reduce the saturation of anything that's red in my image. Now if I wanted to pop up some of the earth tones, I could go down here to yellow, bring in the saturation for that. I think my greens look pretty good, but I want to also change some of the luminance values. I'm going to jump over here to luminance, and if I bring the luminance down of the blue, it's going to darken my sky. It's not going to give it an unnatural darkness, but it just lowers the brightness of the blues in my image. I really like where we're going with this. I think it's pretty good. I might go over here to hue, and I'm probably over tweaking this, but I want to show you how well this works. So I could even say, you know what? The greens aren't quite the shade of green that I want, and I can start tweaking the hue of the green, and we can see that the water changes color, and if I go up here to the yellow, and I start tweaking that, I can actually bring out those autumn colors that were there. So the hue, saturation, and luminance filter, though daunting at first blush, if you play with it, it's probably one of the most powerful filters you can use to correct a color cast. Let's take a quick peek at what this image looked like before. That's a pretty impressive change. Now even though I think I have this image as well balanced as it could be, I want to show you one last filter that I use, or at least I try out at the end of all of my color grading sessions, and that filter is the Remove Color Cast filter. I'll simply apply it, and I'll grab the slider and just move it a little bit over to the right, and sometimes that little tweak notches my color correction up just one more level. Now, there are many ways to balance color in Luminar 2018. Sometimes with a single click, and other times combining several filters. Every image is different, so if one filter isn't doing the trick, try a different one. And remember to switch back and forth to your before and after images throughout your color grading process and see where you've come from and how far you've gotten with your correction.